Hi, this is Andy from Edelweiss Interactive and this video is about lab maps in combination with the decal system. As usual, I first go to create a new decals instance and explain everything based on that one. This time I'm going to select this material here with a catch cutout shader. I'll select a certain part of the texture. I'll pick, I'll pick the graffiti down here. Not very precise. That's better. Rename it to graffiti and place the projector. At the moment I'm using real time a uh, real time shadows. That means we have a directional light in here with shadows enabled. Yeah, you can see perfectly with with that graffiti here that the real time shadows work. Uh, work for cutout shaders, but of course, uh, cutout shaders may not always be the best option. As you see in here, no matter how this one is set up, it will always look ugly. It doesn't look like graffiti. And for that reason, for this kind of texture, we can just not use cutout shaders. So let's switch back to the transparent shader and that looks a lot better. Though we don't have shadow support. At least not at least not real time shadow. But I'll quickly show you that it works with light mapping. The calls are not different to any other kind of mesh if it comes to light mapping. What we need to do to enable light mapping for that is we select the decals instance and over here in the inspector in the static uh, thing over here we select light map static yes we want to apply to all the children and now we can go on to bake the light map for that one go to window light mapping I'll take the tab and grab it over here and I'm going to select low for the quality and zero for bounces. That will give us uh, pretty bad shadows, but it's just for testing purposes and it is sufficient for us. So let's bake it and see what happens. I'll be right back. So it's done. And as you see, the shadows are working perfectly. What Unity does is it takes the mesh or that, sorry, it takes the last UV channel that has been used. In our case, UV2 is not being used, but the UV1 channel is projected. So it takes the layout of that UV channel. In our very simple case, that means that this is the layout and just that part is being used. So it creates new textures and to those textures applies our layout so that region in here and bakes all the light map information into this section so if we duplicate that one here we're gonna get trouble for the simple reason that we are going to have overlapping uv areas the layout is not gonna be useful for light mapping. I'm going to turn this around such that we can see that the light mapping was updated. So right now we are going to get trouble. So here is no shadow, here is no shadow and now I'm going to bake it and you'll see that we're gonna get trouble with it. So let's bake and I'll be right back. So we are done. Let's check the shadows. The shadow for that one 
seems correct. That one is correct, yes. That one is totally in zero. Now go over to that one. And you see, no, that one is definitely wrong. And the reason for that is that you can see it barely in here. That part is shadowed, while that one is lit. Just like the one over here. And the reason for that is that we have an overlapping UV layout. We have we have Unity creates a light map texture and bakes the shadowing information for both or for that projector here and that projector both into one texture area. And so the texturing for that one became correct and for that one that one just uh, got all the shadowing information from that one over here. That is certainly wrong. And if you have this problem with one of your models that you're importing into Unity, you can select that Unity should generate a special UV channel just for the light mapping information. Decals are certainly not imported, but you have exactly the same possibilities. You go to the projection, and instead of selecting diffuse, you can select light mapped diffuse. And that one has exactly the same UV1 channel, but the UV2 channel is light mapping. It creates a new, light, uh, a new UV2 layout just with layouting that has no overlapping UV areas. So let's quickly check if this works. Uh, yeah, very important down here, if you have lots of projectors, it may be very slow because it recalculates the UV2 layout on every update. That means if I drag this one around, each time the mesh is recalculated, the whole UV2 layout gets recalculated. That could be pretty slow, so you can say it should only be updated on optimize. In that case, you need to select down here to uh, this optimize button, which optimizes the mesh. And but before it does this, it computes the UV2 channel, so the light mapping UV layout. Let's do this. And if I bake it now, we should get the correct result. Let's check that. Yeah, that result is not yet correct. I'll bake it again and be right back. So baking is finished and you see the result is perfect. That shadow is correct and that shadow over here is correct as well. Exactly what we wanted. You can use those light mapping for diffuse ones and bumped diffuse ones. And the reason for that is that both the diffuse shader has a, an empty UV2 shader, so we can say, okay, let's use that one for the light mapping layout. Same is true for that one, of course. But we are going to get trouble with bump of target. And the reason for that is that the UV2 channel is already reserved. So you're going to get, you can run into exactly the same trouble trouble we just had with the diffuse thing we've seen over here. So just be careful with that one. So that's everything for this video. Hope you enjoyed it. And don't forget to rate the decal, rate the decal system in the Unity Asset Store to write reviews and maybe make donations. Thanks for watching.